So then, let's start with some other question. Anyone up? Go ahead. Have we seen the takedown movie? Yes, I saw it. I don't remember what circumstances I saw it under. Um, is it louder? They played it at DEF CON. Yes, I was not at DEF CON that year. However, um, I did manage to see it. I forget how or why or why it came around. But uh, I did get to see it. Um, it was interesting and sort of bad. -ish. It did turn out as poorly as I thought it would, but it still was pretty poor. Personally, I thought it was a pretty good movie if you took it as fiction. You thought it was? A pretty good movie if you took it as fiction. Yes, yes, it was. Real life, real life, it's something that you should have taken as fiction, and really could only take as fiction. Um, but if you try and add the real story that everybody knows, but that now everybody at home knows, um, you see, uh, and it just doesn't stack up very well. Any other questions? What, what does it take in? Oh, it takes eighth engine? Uh, it is, it, it is. Oh, I happened to run into him just by chance. We didn't realize it until we were in. I thought you were saying that. Oh, he told us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to be telling everything? I didn't realize it until we were in. Um, there's, I just thought we were just doing this one. Yeah, we got the other stuff on there. But. What was the 20 maps we took out? I don't remember. I don't know, man. There was uh, all sorts of stuff that didn't really apply very well. Uh, for example, uh, there was a great section where Veggie was talking about what a hacker is, what what the CDC did that Veggie was talking about for uh, like five minutes of that. And um, it was great. We loved it. It worked really well. Unfortunately, it was not part of the story. And we had to cut some time, as you know. It, it, was, it did last too long. And so eventually we decided that's one of the things we had to cut. We also cut down some of the scene, uh, some of the sections, like uh, MetroCard when the uh, Fun Pass first came out. You know, we were down there letting people in for free. We cut at least three quarters of that out. No, we cut well, three quarters of it out. It's still, it's still in there. Left. We we cut a whole lot out of it. Other questions? Yeah. Uh, how many? Uh, how many Time period between. Eighteen minutes. Eighteen minutes from when you swipe it to when you swipe it in the same terminal. Uh, what you can do, what a lot of well, not what a lot of people do anymore, but uh, what I still do is you swipe it. You go into the train. You go to your source, the, to your destination. And you swipe it again on the way out because it doesn't matter how fast you use between stations. You can use them instantly in all like thirty-five stations that you can. I get copies of the card for it, um, and, uh, and about 35 people, and about 34 people, in for free. Other questions? Comments? Now, like, you know, the general public doesn't really know much about hacking or even about computers, so how, how do you explain how do we explain the Kevin situation to people on the street? To bring them over and explain to them that an injustice has been done. What you saw in the documentary is pretty much how we did it. It was really fast. We had usually flyers with us describing the entire thing in detail, and we went over it briefly as we spoke to them. Um, a lot of people didn't believe it, as you saw, and um, so you know, we had to we had to sort of find ways to uh, to let them if what we were saying was true that this is how would they feel about that in the film. In general, uh, we um, find people that. Uh, Actually, well, a lot of the people we tell on the talks are just happen to be people like you see here. Uh, people who do realize that things do go wrong on occasion and, um, and won't completely disbelieve uh, anything you're saying just because you know, you're anti government or something. Um, so, 
it helps to to have a lot of practice in it actually, uh, to be able to cite references and and, uh, and procedures um, to show them that you do know what you're talking about. That's uh, really all I can say. It has been shown at film festivals all over the place, really, um, and uh, movie theaters here and there. Um, we've shown it at the New York Film Festival, uh, which is in New York and actually lives in Nevada for some reason. Uh, we've shown it at, uh, at uh, the Woodstock Film Festival, we've shown it at um, film festivals in Ohio, we've shown it at um, Science Fiction Convention, I believe, we've sort of shown it in. Um, we've shown it here, and of course we're selling it. Uh, also, actually, this is something you might not know of, we're broadcasting it on Free Speech TV uh, sometime in the fairly near future. Um, Free Speech TV is a channel, public access-ish channel, available from DirecTV, uh, not DirecTV, Dish Network, uh, and several others, and it's also web broadcast. Uh, okay, exactly. Why he was in jail. It was just the very, very end of our production um, sequence. It was like maybe a week before we showed it here um, that we got that tape, I believe. That, that sounds about right. Do you plan to uh, do you plan to, uh, do the interview on the DVD? That's a good question. Um, I hadn't thought of it. Uh, maybe Manuel has. Uh, it would be it would be an interesting idea. Yeah. Um, Thanks for bringing it up. Questions? Yes. Yeah, it was never released in the U.S. Do you think that was because of what you guys did? It, I doubt it. It's, it's such a bad movie. Oh, it's it's, it it wouldn't fly here. It's not a great movie. However, um, we did do some, we did make changes, but we did that did have effect. Uh, everybody did know. Everybody in uh, Miramax knew about what we were doing, and uh, the changes would not have been made without us. Uh, without our intervention. I'm convinced of that. Is that the reason why it did not get released in the United States? I don't know. Sometime it may be released to television. It's never going to be the theaters in the Yes? It seems to be a lot of the phone side of it. It's not like the handset audio is way louder than what's on the line. I'm hungry. I also noticed that the didn't do other guys who have used mostly for the fine version of Roger. Um, what the and I think that's one of the best defenses for Kevin is letting his opposition speak. And what they do, they always make seem to make fools of themselves. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, what, what are we what are we missing from the film that we're not seeing you know, where we can see how to make Um, because every time I hear like evidence brought up, by side, it always seems to confirm the protest. Yes. Yeah. So uh, and, and that's kind of something that we were missing from the film, and I know that wasn't the intent of the film. You mean it, it is a pro Kevin movie? Yeah, it is a pro Kevin movie. Yeah, exactly. But Lisa, in the beginning, NYPD Blue, um, they're sort of uh, shaky cam thing that they started was something that uh, we had sort of tried to emulate in the very beginning, uh, sort of fell through, but then uh, looking at it in the end, uh, we, sort of, we sort of did have it. Um, I think that's all I can say about it. To the heck. Yes, go ahead. I had TV production in high school. That's not really filmmaking. That's it. Um, that's pretty much all I had uh, making this. Um, same thing with Emmanuel. He had uh, not done this before. However, he's been wanting to do it for years. Um, ever s uh, I remember the first time he approached me about it was when I was talking something abstract about video uh, after the uh, 97 conference. Um, have you ever done filmmaking before? I myself have not done filmmaking before. Uh, Yes, and this, the, you and the grayish shirt, yeah, you. What? Okay, go ahead.
the general reception of people in different areas of the general public. Um, it varies a lot depending on who you show it to. Uh, we can show it to hackers and obviously you know what the, what the outcome is going to be there. Um, at film festivals, um, the, the people are also pretty wide open in general. Um, they've, you know, lived a lot of, uh, they've lived a long, hard life, a lot of them. And uh, they uh, can identify with some of the things said in the documentary and uh, generally like it. In Europe, we've shown it a couple of times, and there were a couple of uh, small jokes that were sort of, uh, I don't really recall any specific examples. Um, the closest thing I can recall is uh, we had uh, gone to the uh, National Labs and uh, we said it was home of well-kept nuclear secrets. And about a week, we had already edited that, it was out, it was in the can, and about a week before we sh showed it, uh, we had the uh, nuclear secrets were leaked from the same laboratory. So it sort of had a, 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 a original joke. And um, people laughed a whole lot more in Europe <laughs> than they did here. <laughs> um, oh, also, oh, the, at the end of um, Hollywood, we had, uh, that's, that's, that's the way life is, that's the way American life, this is America, that's the way, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, that, I can't remember the exact quote right now. But uh, in Europe, they, uh, they laughed a whole lot more at that. And um, depending on who we showed it to in uh, film theater, in, the in um, the film festivals, um, people there laughed out loud. They were rolling with laughter. And when we showed it to a, a group of uh, science fiction buffs, um, they didn't get it. So it varied a whole lot. And the yellow lanyard there. Both. Uh, um, why was the uh, trial delayed so long? Um, Emmanuel is a much better uh, way to an a much better answer to this, I'm sure. But uh, basically, it was uh, each side um, trying to push it further back. Um, no single side was responsible for it. Um, I don't think, but uh, it was it was a lot of motions. There was more motions in this case than in. I heard this statistic. It was more motions in this case than there was in any other case in the history of that court. Um, it was just motion after motion after motion, each one requiring extra time to delay the trial. Um, and Kevin was actually trying to to get the trial. However, he was not prepared to do it on unfair ground, on, in unfair waters. So um, when it was necessary, I believe he also agreed to to delay it. However. Um, I would honestly, after seeing all this, all the evidence and all the uh, all the papers, I would uh, attribute it to the uh, state of California a lot more than I would to Kevin. Yes, go ahead. How much did it cost to produce this movie? After this never answered this question, asked this question. I wonder why. How long does it? How much money did it cost to do this whole thing? That's a thirty million dollars. That's a, a good question, and we don't really know, nor do we really want to. Um, in independent film, it's always a given that you will never, ever, ever make back the money you put into making it. Um, and this is no exception. Uh, it's hard to put a number on it because we'd be living anyway. So if we're living here or if we're living in a car traveling across the United States, it's really not a whole lot different. We're not sure how to add all that together. I can tell you the camera cost a few thousand. We spent a few thousand in tapes. We had a, a special machine uh, set aside with thousands of, uh, of uh, hard drives, apparently. It was, it was probably about 30 hard drives uh, in this machine. We had a big machine to do this. Um, and other random expenses of... Uh, of uh, flights and so on and so forth. How much did it cost in the end? Uh, there's really no number that we can put a finger on. And uh, I'm sorry, that's the best answer I have to give. Over there. How much did it cost the taxpayers to prosecute Kevin? I know it was a big number um, when it was released by someone or calculated by someone. And my brain is telling me 35 million, but I'm not sure. I really don't know, and Emmanuel might, if and when he gets here. He should have been here a while ago. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Which of the 
like to have interviewed the Y, and also, did you film the uh, return of the uh, rental car? Who we you? filmed everything, but not everything made into the movie. I mean, we've got, uh, I think, what was it in the end, 80 hours of... Uh, it was 100 hours. 100 hours of uh, film, so, you know, I mean, so it's probably not that interesting returning the car. We, you know... It was probably just, ha this is kind of funny, our trunk broke, ha and let's film it, because it's funny. Yeah, we get um, to see it, but you guys never will. And the, the, we, just, we just filmed it, because, you know, film was kind of, sort of cheap, not really. But uh, it was cheap enough that we could just, you know, do stuff like that. Um, so we did. Uh, your other question was? Uh, uh, would you have liked to have interviewed? Who would we have liked to have interviewed and why? Obviously, Satoma Shumamura would have been at the top of that list um, for obvious reason. Uh, we could never find him, and we did make a valiant effort to, to do that. Um, who else should we have interviewed? I'm not sure if it would work out very well, but uh, some of the actors from Takedown uh, might have been interesting to interview, at least, you know, not, maybe not in depth. I'm not sure how much they would have to contribute to it. But it would have been interesting to see, you know, more sides of this. Uh, as you know, the, uh, the uh, producers uh, ran away from us as we, we tried to, to find them. Um, so that, they would also have been pretty interesting to talk to as far as, but I think Miramax just sort of changed their mind on an official level and just they ran away instead of, or maybe they were never authorized to talk to us in the first place is another guess. Other people to talk to? I can't really think of any, can you? Other questions? Comments? Items? Okay, I guess Emmanuel never made it. Uh, sorry about that. Um, we'll be hanging around up here if you want to ask us anything individually, and I'm sure Emmanuel will be here shortly, maybe, perhaps. Yeah,